Hey, this is Nick with Obsessed Garage and welcome to OG Academy. Today we'll be talking about how to go about shopping for a pressure washer, uh, some of the technical details you need to know, as well as some price points. If you've never used a pressure washer for detailing or general cleaning around the house, it is a total game changer and once you have one, it's very difficult to go back to using just a garden hose. Not only does it do a better job of cleaning, it also speeds the process up significantly. Before I recommend any specific pressure washers, I would like to talk about some of the technical things I think you need to know before I make my recommendations. So what do you need to know about pressure washers? Well, at least when it comes to detailing, flow is definitely king. So I wouldn't worry about the PSI rating you'll see on the box. We found that anything over a thousand PSI isn't really gonna provide any more cleaning or ability. So a thousand is the sweet spot. Secondly, Total stop or complete stop is a feature that is an absolute must have. Basically what that means is when you pull the trigger, the pressure washer will turn on and when you let go of the trigger, the pressure washer will turn off. That way while you're washing your car or you're cleaning, the pressure washer isn't running nonstop the entire time. And third, you'll probably want to change out the stock nozzles that come with your pressure washer, meaning the little plastic tips on the front. Most pressure washer manufacturers will skew these tips to get you more pressure. But as I mentioned first, pressure or PSI is not what we're after. Flow is absolutely king. Number four, pressure washers come in many different sizes, shapes, price ranges, and for many different applications. So know that one size definitely won't fit all. What I'm saying in this video is more skewed towards automotive detailing, so it wouldn't necessarily apply to somebody who's looking to clean houses or things like that. Last thing you need to know is that gas pressure washers will almost always be more powerful and flow more than an electric pressure washer. But when it comes to automotive detailing, more is definitely not always better. Uh, remember, flow is king and we're trying to stay around that thousand PSI range. Additionally, with a gas pressure washer, we're losing out on the total stop feature, which is a great thing to have when it comes to detailing. So before I get into my specific recommendations of what pressure washer to buy, it's important to decide whether or not you will be wall mounting your pressure washer. Uh, you can effectively cut your decisions in half by deciding whether you will be putting your pressure washer on the wall or whether you will keep it portable. If you can swing the cost of wall mounting, it is absolutely the way to go. Uh, the reason for that is you'll get access to a hose reel. Uh, the ease of use and the ease of storage of the hose reel is an absolute game changer. Entry level pressure washers, or what I would describe as sub $500 non-serviceable units. So these sealed non-serviceable units are ultimately disposable. You can expect to get anywhere from 80 to 200 hours of use out of them, uh, but do know that that'll vary greatly depending on use conditions and the pressure washer itself. So what would my recommendations be for an entry level pressure washer? Well, in the sub 500 non-serviceable category, the Active 2.0 and the Active VE56 are basically unmatched. The VE56 has a 1.18 GPM and the Active 2.0 has a 2.12 GPM. These are untouched by any of the other entry level pressure washers that we tested. If you're looking for a rolling cart or a more portable solution, I would recommend getting the Karcher K1700. We found this is the best out of the lower end entry level pressure washers. Something worth thinking about when you're buying an entry level pressure washer is to budget in the cost of upgrading your hose and gun. The stock accessories that come with these entry level pressure washers are usually not very good and they're kind of bulky. So upgrading your accessories can be the biggest difference maker in user experience. So let's talk high end pressure washers, meaning $600 and up and serviceable. The biggest difference between these units and the units we talked about before is serviceability. So whereas the entry level pressure washers would stop working after so many hours, these you can buy new parts and service them. So after 100 or 50 hours, you can change the oil, change seals, and you basically have a brand new unit. 
The same philosophies remain on these units as compared to the other ones. Flow is still king. We're still looking for total stop. Serviceability and ease of maintenance is something to consider. And also the looks of the unit. If you're spending this much money on a pressure washer, you'd at least like it to look nice while it's on your wall. As far as a recommendation goes, the Krenzla K1322 and K1122 is what we here at Obsessed Garage feel to be the best pressure washer available on the market for detailing, of course. Not only because of their build quality, also the looks, the sound of them, and of course, the performance that they put out. They're actually so good that we don't have them in stock right now for the video. If you're looking for another option besides the Krenzlas, the AR630 is an excellent unit to consider. It is right up there with the Krenzlas as far as performance and build quality at a slightly lower cost. If you're looking for a truly high-end and top-of-the-line pressure washer, you'll want to consider something like the Krenzla KWS700. This unit has a higher output than all of the other units we talked about today, but it does come at a cost. This unit is certainly not cheap at $3,800 and you will need three phase power to make it work. But if you have access to that, this is absolutely the best pressure washer we sell. Last thing I would like to mention is that most of these higher end and even some of the lower end pressure washers will pull a significant amperage from the wall. So if you don't have a dedicated 15 or 20 amp circuit in your garage, I would recommend going with either a lower in pressure washer or having one of those installed. Hopefully you took something away from this video and you feel a little bit more confident when it comes to purchasing a pressure washer for your needs. As always, everything I showed in this video is available on our website. And if you have any specific questions regarding pressure washers, feel free to comment down below or reach out to us directly at support at obsessgarage.com.